Okay, this is Math 116, uh, Section 1.3, Linear Functions. Uh, so this first one is find the x and y intercepts, graph the equation. So we're going to see a couple of styles of linear functions. In this case, this is what's going to be called standard form. We'll see that a little bit later in the section. X's and y's are on the same side. And so this is asking us to find where it's crossing x and y. Um, if it's going to be an x-intercept, that means the y has to be 0 because it can't be above or below. If it's going to be a y-intercept, that means the x has to be 0 because it can't be left or right. So to find x or y-intercepts, and this is really in any function, um, we just let the opposite be 0. So to find x, I could just go 3x minus 2 times 0 equals 6. That drops out. 3x equals 6 and x equals 2. So that will be my x-intercept. And then for the y-intercept, we let x equal 0. So 3 times 0 minus 2y equals 6. So then that drops out. Divide over the negative 2 and get y is negative 3. And then once we have two points, we can use that to graph the line. So often when we're in um, standard form, x's and y's are on the same side, the intercepts are actually going to be a fairly easy way to get it graphed. Sometimes this number's terrible, but sometimes it works. Um, so here when x is uh, 2, y is 0. And here when x is 0, y is negative 3. So we get something that looks kind of like that. Okay, slope of a line. Um, and hopefully you're remembering a little bit of this from either Math 98 or 94. Um, slope is our vertical change over our horizontal change, or also known as rise over run. Uh, and then we have this other definition. Remember, slope is m. And it's uh, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1 when we're given two points. And for the rise over run, here's just kind of a little picture of what it would look like. Run, again, is our horizontal change, and then rise is our vertical change. So if I'm given a picture, um, I definitely like the rise over run idea. If I'm given ordered pair, then I definitely like the formula version. So what we'll do is we'll just treat this as our x1, y1, and this one is our x2, y2. And I'm just going to plug them in here, and then that's going to let me get slope. So m equals y2 minus y1, so 5 minus 15 over x2 minus x1, so x2 is negative 9 minus 21. So 5 minus 15 would be negative 10, negative 9 minus another 21 will be negative 30. So double negative, so that makes positive, and I can reduce out a factor of 10, so that should be one third. Okay, so this next one, find the slope of the line. Oh, actually, these are the ones I'd have you guys try. So for this first one, um, <clears throat> we're finding the slope of the line through these points. I'm going to go ahead and do it, um, the numerical version, and then I'm going to show the graphical version, just to kind of give you both pictures of it. Um, so this would go y2, negative 7 minus 3, y1, and then x2 minus x1. So 2 minus... And that's what I wanted to show you right there, is that minus and minus, and people often make a little sign error there. So careful when you're subtracting a negative to get both signs down. And that becomes uh, negative 10 over 3. So my slope should be negative 10 thirds. So then if I come over here and graph this, when x is negative 1, y is 3. And when x is 2, y is negative 7, 2, 4, 6, 7. And then I draw that try to make a straight line. I should find that the rise and the run are negative 10 thirds. So I'll do rise first. So that would be right here. If we count the boxes, we got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So that's 10, and it's negative because we're going down. And then looking here, this is 3. And so there's our rise over our run of negative 10 thirds. We could also go 3 this way and then negative 10 and get the exact same thing. So it doesn't matter which one you do first. Um, so in this problem, I'd probably just graph the point since I have to graph it and count, but just showing that we get the same thing in the direction. And again, I'm going to show the, the more algebraish version, um, mostly because I want to point out what happens in terms of the slope when we try to find it for these special cases that are coming up. So this would be y2 minus y1, so negative 2 minus 3 over 4 minus 4. So something strange is happening, which is I'm getting this division by 0. And remember, division by 0 is undefined. 
and so the slope does not exist. So what would that look like if we graphed it? So we'd have x is 4, y is 3, and when x is 4, so you can see it's not a function, y is negative 2. So what that is is a vertical line, and so the, the slope is undefined because it's infinite. Uh, this next one, and then when we look at these um, in terms of uh, formulas, this is going to be x is always 4, so we'll see that a little bit later. But this is just saying no matter what, x stays 4. Here, m would be 3 minus 3 over 1 minus negative 2, or 0 over 3. Nothing divided by 3 is still nothing, so that one has a slope of 0. Um, and that's going to be our other special case. So in this case, it's y equals 3, because um, y is always 3. So when x is negative 2, y is 3. When x is 1, y is 3. And so that's a horizontal line. So x equals vertical line, y equals horizontal line. And this one, undefined slope, this one's slope is 0. If you think of hiking, that has infinite slope, right? It's a cliff, and this has no slope, or m is 0. Okay, and then here's where we get sort of all of our definitions in one spot. So slope-intercept form, that's y equals mx plus b. m is our slope that we just looked at, and b is going to be where it crosses the y-axis, the y-intercept. Uh, standard form, that was that first um, example with what we did at intercepts. So ax plus by equals c, uh, no fractions in there. And then point-slope form, this is actually the slope formula, um, just kind of relabeled and solved around. Let me write it a little bit bigger in case you can't see it. y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. And what this is, is if we have a slope and a point, we can put them in here and then just clean it up, and then that gets us our equation of a line. So we use that a bit coming up also. Um, for this first example, we uh, give the slope and the y-intercept for each of the following equations. Okay, so here the um, slope would be negative 5 thirds because this is in y equals mx plus b. So slope is what's in front, and then b, the y-intercept, is on the end. So that would be negative 1 half. And then to graph that, um, it, I would guess it will let you start at negative 1 half. And then we're just going to go, so negative 5 over 3. So that means I want to go um, right 3 boxes and then down 5. So there's zero, so that's one, two, three, four, five. And that would be our graph. So I'm just starting on the negative one half, because that's my intercept, and I'm going uh, right three and down five. Okay, so this next one, y equals negative two. Um, so that's the horizontal line we just saw, so that means no matter what, x is y is always going to be negative 2. So our graph would look like this. Our slope on that, remember, is 0, and our y-intercept is going to be negative 2. Um, for 8, that's x is 5, so that means x is always 5, no matter what y is. So that's our vertical line. And for this one, um, the slope is undefined. And then the y-intercept doesn't exist because this is never going to cross the y-axis, so d and e. Um, for number 9, it wants us to say the slope and the y-intercept. Um, to see the slope, I could graph the intercepts and read it off the graph. Um, I think I will show it as um, solving this around for y, just because I haven't done that yet. So if I bring this 5x over, I'll have 7y equals negative 5x plus 35. And then I can divide the 7 everywhere. I think we did this back in 1.1, where we solved for a variable. So this would be an example of doing that. And then 35 divided by 7 would be 5. So I was in slope-intercept. Uh, sorry, I was in uh, standard form, and now I'm in slope-intercept. So it looks like my slope is negative 7 fifths 5 sevenths, sorry, and my b is 5. So coming up here, when x is 0, y is 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we're going to, the rise is going to be 5, uh, negative, and the run is going to be 7. 
And you could also just do, for graphing, I think it's actually easier, and I would check myself to make sure I didn't do something dumb here, but when x is 0, y is 5, and when y is 0, 5x equals 35, so this is 7. So to me, that's easier than using the slope. Uh, for number 10, we're given, uh, write the equation of the line that passes through the, uh, this point containing that slope. So this is where we're going to use um, that formula from the last page, which was y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. That was that point slope form. So now we're given a slope and a point. We're going to toss them in here and get the equation. So y, um, this is going to be like my x1 and y1, minus 5 equals m, negative 1 fourth, and then x minus negative 2. So y minus 5 equals negative 1 fourth, x minus minus makes plus 2, and I'll distribute that over. Oops, 1 fourth x, and then distributing to the 2, I get negative 1 half when I reduce. And then I'm going to add this 5 over. So I'm just going to go plus 5, since I'm just about out of room, plus 5. And then we'll do a 2 over 2 there to get a common denominator. So this will be y equals um, negative 1 fourth x. And then negative 1 half plus 10 halves is going to be plus 9 halves. So that would be my equation of the line. Um, I'm not super stoked about graphing from that fraction if I don't have to. And here I'm given this nice point. So I would just come up here and go x is negative 2, y is 5. And then my slope is negative 1 fourth, so I'm going to drop 1 and run 4. So to me that's easier than trying to graph off of the, the fractional point. But you can do either. Okay, number 11, I'd have you guys try. Um, so this time we're given two points and asked to find the equation of the line. So we'll do our slope formula to get slope, and then we'll, that will make it just like the last problem. So um, y2 minus y1 is going to be 2 minus 5. x2 minus x1 is going to be 4 minus negative 2. So 2 minus 5 makes a negative 3 over minus and minus makes plus, so that's 6. And then simplifying, I get 1 half, negative. So now I have a slope and a point. And I can just use that formula that I used in the last question, which is a point-slope formula. And so I'm going to use one without the negative sign just because it looks easier. So y minus 2 equals m is negative 1 half, and then x minus 4. And I'll run that one half through. Negative and negative makes positive, and four divided by two would make two. So a little bit nicer numbers than the last one. And then add the two over. And then y equals negative one half x plus four. Okay, next topic is parallel and perpendicular slopes. So if two lines are parallel, their slopes are the same. That makes sense, right? Because they kind of have to track forever, so they're going to go over and up at the same rate. Two lines are perpendicular um, if their slopes are reciprocals with opposite signs, um, which is, I guess, a way of saying it. Um, the, the math definition doesn't make a ton of sense. If you multiply them together, you get negative one. Um, but the reciprocals with opposite signs just means they're going to be flipped over, and one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. So um, what we'll do is we'll solve each of these two equations, find their slopes, and then use these definitions to determine um, if it happens to be either of those. So for this first one, we'll do 5x. Um, actually, sorry, we'll go 6y, and then we subtract the 5x over, plus 30. And I'll divide everything by 6. So this one in slope-intercept is y equals negative 5, 6, x plus 5. And then we'll do the same thing with this one. I'm going to subtract the 6x over and get uh, negative 5y equals negative 6x plus 30, and then divide the negative 5 everywhere. So that cancels. So this one is y equals negative and negative make positive 6 fifths x, and then minus uh, 6. 
So they definitely don't have the same slope, so they are not parallel. Um, if we take the two slopes, they are the reciprocal with opposite signs. We're using this definition, 5 6 for this one negative times 6 fifths for this one makes negative 30 over 30, and then that's how they get the negative one. So reciprocal with opposite signs. So these ones we would say are perpendicular. Uh, these last couple look like they're going to be terrible, but then they're, they're really not. Um, it's basically just trying to identify that idea of um, slope and y-intercept from word problems. So an electric utility company determines that the monthly bill for residential customer by an energy charge of 5.39 cents per kilowatt hour to its base charge of 23.38. So it's adding this for every kilowatt hour, and then just to be hooked up, you have, you have to pay them 23.38. Write an equation for the monthly charge y in terms of x, and then um, where x is the kilowatt hours used. So y equals, for every kilowatt hour we use, we're going to have um, 5.39 cent, 5 cents. And let y be measured in dollars. We've got to be a little bit careful right there. And that's because this is cents. So if it's basically five and a little bit, of, you know, a third of a cent, in decimal, that's going to be 0 0.15, so that would be five cents in terms of dollars, three, nine. So we have to get this in terms of dollars, since we're going to add dollars to it, we want Y to be in terms of dollars. So five cents for every kilowatt hour used, and then plus that base charge of 23.38. So if we use no energy whatsoever, we still have to pay them the 23. Um, and then for every hour we use thereafter, we're paying them five cents. Uh, number 14, uh, it's been estimated that a certain stream can support 65,000 fish if it's pollution free. It has further been estimated that for each ton of pollutants in the stream, uh, 1,200 fish can be supported. Assume the relationship is linear, write an equation that gives the population of fish P in terms of um, pollutants X. So we got P equals so this is our, if there's nothing, if there's no pollution in there, we got 65,000 fish. But then for every um, ton of pollutants, we're going to have this many fewer fish that can be supported. So 1,200 times X. We could write it the other way too. This one just sort of feels more like it should go that order. So this is our total fish minus 1,200 for each ton of pollutants, and that would give us our new population.